All right, so I just went ahead and uploaded the template hip-hop track. Now, we had a lot of questions on audio setup and the browser, so let's start with the audio setup and some of the most important things that we see there. All right, first and foremost, let's make sure our MIDI controller is set up properly. And the best way to do that is to go down to help and open the startup wizard. It's gonna ask you to make sure it's plugged in. We've got it plugged in. Today, we are going to be using the Native Instruments Machine MK2. Now, there's no option for the full Machine MK2. There's an option for the micro, but you know, so we'll just choose Machine. And it doesn't work the best, but it works for us so now we've finished that process if we hit a pad here you can see it's lighting up down here at C1 but unfortunately our pads are mapped a little bit higher than that it looks like we're up here but um we'll show you a fix for that later for now let's get into the preferences and make sure that our audio is set up properly so the first thing you're going to want to do is select your audio device make sure your inputs and outputs are selected i like to disable any outputs or inputs that i'm not using just to save a little bandwidth you know save a little bit of that precious cpu resource gold baby <laughs> All right, anyway, next you're going to want to make sure your sample rate is what you want it to be. I like to use 48k hertz. That seems to work for me. Your buffer size, this is going to affect your input latency. I have more videos about that on my channel if you want to go check that out. Links in the description. But uh, 256 will work for me for now. Latency adjust, I don't really know what that means, but we will not worry about that today. Now, moving on. All we need next is the record and export tab. Audio recording, I like to record at a bit depth of 24 bits, and I also like to bounce at 24 bits. So this looks good to me. Anytime I'm starting in a new software, I wanna check the bit depth, and I want to check the sample rate. The buffer size, you can change throughout the project. Again, more on that in my channel. So be sure and go check that out. All right, so like I said, today I'm using the Machine MK2. I have used the Ableton Push 2 also in this software. It's worked decently. I haven't had the best of luck with my MIDI controllers, but if you're struggling, here's a few pro tips for you. You've got a few tabs down here at the bottom of the screen. We'll go over these because this is really important for navigating this software. But here we have the MIDI Learn. So this tab is great if you have a MIDI controller that you wanna map, maybe you wanna map the knobs, the pads, whatever it may be, you can hit the learn button and then highlight anything, move a pad, hit a knob, and it will map, okay? But what we're really interested in is this MIDI monitor. So this is gonna give us some really good information and explain why when I hit this freaking pad, I'm not hearing any sound and it's driving me nuts, okay? So let's get this figured out. Again, we're on the machine MK2. Here, when we hit a pad, we can see there's a lot of information. What we're really after is this note on, okay? You can see note on, we're playing the note C1. If I hit a different pad, it's obviously gonna be a different note, okay? So we need to load some samples to C1, and here we have C1. Oh, my mistake, let's see negative one. What am I thinking? So what we can do once we know the pad that we're hitting, we can double click on that piano roll, and then it will highlight it. So we need to load a sample to this little baby right here, which gives us a perfect opportunity to go over the browser. Everybody had questions about the browser. Where'd you get your sample pack? Blah, 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 blah. Where'd you get this? Oh my goodness, I can't load anything into the samples. Stop asking me these questions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you need some samples, send me an email to the email on the screen right now with a subject that says, plug me. And you know what? I'll plug you with a free sample pack. And that's the best I got for you. Let's move on. Okay. We've got to load these samples into H10 so that we can get a freaking kick drum. Here we go. All right. We've got these buttons down here. Like I said, we can go to the media browser. This is all the, the bulk that MPC Beats comes with. Nah, we don't want none of that. We want some real man stuff, okay? Again, here's the MPC Beat stuff. Here is the file browser, baby. Now, this is what we want here. We can load up some folders, and we can access the samples that we have on our computer. So here we go. We're going to drop this baby down, and we want to go to the data drive because that's where I keep my samples. 
All right, so we double click that and you can see that we had some action here. Now, this is like the project manager. You can see here we have project, we have all samples selected. We can select the programs that we have loaded. If you load some sequences in, here we have a special MPC Beats instrument kit type thing and these are all the samples that come with it. Anyway, we just loaded this sample in here. We're gonna drag this onto H10. And now we've got a kick, baby. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and load up a drum kit and then, you know, it's it's just that easy. So I'm gonna keep searching in here and I'll be back when I've got a kit loaded up. Okay, I can't play the drums right now. But anyway, we've got a hi-hat, a snare, and a kick loaded up. It's that easy, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you get it done, okay? Now, we also had a lot of questions involving MIDI controllers. And you see, this piano is really helpful. If you're having trouble, like uh, somebody commented about their their MPD 61 or something like that. I don't know. Okay. They had a keyboard and the pads were working on their keyboard, but the keys themselves were not working. So open up this little piano roll, see if the keys are playing. If not, you might want to check up here, which leads us to our next point, kind of how MPC beats runs as software. Here you can see you have a key range. If you click on that, you can edit it that. So make sure that you're in the right key range. Otherwise you're not going to be able to hear your MIDI instrument. Also, sometimes MIDI instruments don't play in certain octaves. So with your actual MIDI controller, you got to make sure that you're in the right octave. You're going to make sure you're sending notes from that MIDI controller that that MIDI instrument can play. So, you know, just, just do a little checkup on that and that should help you out. I also received a lot of questions about what is the best MIDI controller for MPC Beats. Like I said, I've used the Push 2. It hasn't been great. It hasn't been horrible. I've used the MK2 with uh, MPC Beats. That hasn't been the best, as you saw. We've really got to go through some loopholes just to set up a drum kit. What I've seen people really love and what's in the MPC Beats videos on their actual YouTube channel is an MPK Mini. People swear by this thing. All the cue links, all these little knobs line up, all the pads line up and you've also got a keyboard and hey if you check the description there is a an, an affiliate link that will help support my channel so hey if you're if you're thinking about picking that up do me a favor use the affiliate link but anyway moving on all right, so next I got a few questions about sequencing your beats and kind of how it works. We had a few people coming over from FL Studio that kind of had the, the pattern workflow and they were kind of looking for something similar to that. So I guess I'll just explain these three little tabs here. You have the sequence, the track, and the program and they're all related right so I like to think of a sequence as kind of like your song within the sequence you're gonna put different tracks like we have this track here and then the program is what's actually playing the sound so this hip-hop kit that's our program if we were to change this to none we're not gonna hear anything because this is an empty program there's no beats loaded up so if we go back to our hip-hop kit that's all that this entire sequence is composed of it's just this one track of an instance of the hip-hop kit now we can go ahead and create a new track and we can create a variation of that hip-hop kit or load in a completely new instrument and see so we just combine tracks into our sequence. So I guess if you wanted a similar workflow to Fruity Loops, what I would recommend is making uh, different sequences with different variations. Like maybe you have an intro sequence, you have a chorus sequence, and you have a verse sequence. And then you can kind of lay them out a little bit similar to Fruity Loops. All right, somebody also had a question about what it was like to run MPC Beats as a plugin in Studio One. Now, I don't got Studio One, but I got something better than that, which is Ableton Live, baby. So let's uh, go to our plugins. Oh, MPC Beats, it looks like I've already done this before. <laughs> All right, so we'll uh, load it in, and yes, so it looks like it does working, but for um, just for... For old time's sake, let's load up a template and be sure. All right, you know what? I can't figure out <laughs> how to load a template from here. So let's do the next best thing and load up some amazing 
NPC Beats content, you know? We got these 80s kit F9 grid hits, baby. Let's load it up. Doesn't get much better than that dragon audio effect on that bad boy. Not an effect rack. Let's do something crazy. Let's get crazy. Ooh, double ether. Okay, yeah, so so it is an audio track, which is very interesting, which means you can process it um, with Ableton's audio effects or whatever DAW you're in and using MPC Beats as a plugin, you can use that DAW's audio effects, which is pretty freaking sweet, man. I've got to say, I will, I will mess around with this a little bit more because, yeah, I can see some uses, especially because MPC Beats has a lot of features man it's really impressive for a free software you know it's got that that vintage sound it's got those like mpc vintage vibes locked into it i don't know how to explain it but you know you can go on your master track and and load up a a, a vintage swing style or and whatnot but yeah very cool very cool but that also brings me to my next point and i'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant here because we had a bunch of people hating on this free amazing software down in the comments like how are you hating on this man some people said oh this this software is only good for for beat making you can't really do anything with it what bro what are you talking about man if you can't do anything with this software then you can't make music <laughs> man you've, you've got two audio tracks here you can record basic vocals you've got up to eight midi tracks if you don't want to do that then pay up some money man this software is free it comes with a host of of effects and instruments and it doesn't get much better than this so man i i just had to get that rant off of my chest all right, that's going to be all for me. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to get to them. And also, if you want to support the channel and you're thinking about getting an MPK Mini, check the links in the description for an affiliate link. Or you can subscribe for free, you broke friends. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Peace. Play this record as frequently as possible.